You mentioned Eminem a little while ago. Uh, I see you got a song where you sampled Eminem's stand. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? Yeah, um, I got the beat from KD Pro and I was in LA and in the beat, you could actually hear like the rhythm of, of the, the, the stand sample, not the beat, but the stand sample of what she's saying on the song. And it just hit me like, oh, I'm gonna flip the words. And I went in, I bar it out, and, and then I, I flipped the words in the chorus and, and I made it, you know, more about the paranoia of death and, and, and dying and immortality and mortality, you know? I see you got uh, a little backlash or Slim Jimmy had a little bit of something to say about it. Yeah, yeah, my man Slim Jim for sure. So, so what all happened with that? I don't know. Um, he, he, uh, Sway Lee, who's a cool guy, you know, he got uh, his own version. It hasn't dropped yet, but he got his own version out. And I guess my version was getting too much steam online and Slim Jim tried to stop that. He was like, you know, uh, my version is the banging version, bro. And he said something like that. And we just had a little exchange, you know. OK, I've seen in a few interviews you've talked about that you had an incident where uh, in a club and, and, you know, you tried to shoot somebody or something when you was a kid. Yeah. What all happened with that? Oh well, yeah, that's funny because um, you know, I spoke on that uh, on, on another interview platform, and I was really talking about divine intervention in my life, and I realized after that that you can't really talk about divine intervention or or your relationship with God with people who don't have a relationship with God like that. They will never understand, you know. Um, so. Yeah, I talked about a situation where a gun didn't go off. At the end of the night, somehow the, the shit was in pieces. Weird shit. And, you know, I think a lot of what got lost in context was I was talking about the time my shit didn't go off, which to me is something that I thank God for every day because all the other times my shit did go off when I was a youngin', I got through. This would have been the one when I wasn't getting through. So that's my divine intervention. And I've actually had more situations that I consider, you know, miracles, but I don't choose to share them with the public like that because I got to realize everybody's not spiritual like me. Everybody doesn't have a relationship with God like that. And, you know, a lot of people won't relate. So I'll just keep that near and dear or share it with the ones who I know, you know, believe in God the way I do. How did you feel at the time when it happened? Relieved. I felt like it was divine intervention. I thought about it for years. I still even think at, about even, it. Even from the beginning, you felt like that? You Hell weren't, you weren't yeah. mad that... No, I felt like it was a miracle from, from, from the jump because you got to understand, you know, prior to this, my homies are, you know, just getting picked up on a murder. I'm really outside actively busting my gun in my neighborhood. As a youngin, key word, youngin, you know, like this is 15 years ago. I'm just, I'm a legal citizen rapper now, but at the time my gun is going off. I'm making people scatter like roaches. You feel me? My city know, anybody from my era knows. So it's like, I'm really a little out of control. And at the time I walk into that event, I'm rapping, but I'm also out of control. My homies also just got picked up on a murder that they're still sitting on to this day because they got natural life. And these are my best friends, guys that I'm with every day. So by the time I get there and I'm trying to just do what I do, what I've been doing, because it worked every other time. But this would have been the wrong one. This is actually the first time I'm going to shoot out of fear for real. All the other times was out of anger. This was I'm backing up. I think the guy got a weapon, shit like that. So, you know, I don't even want to get into it too crazy, but. Yeah, I thought it was a miracle from day one. And it's still something It's like if I get nervous before like a show or something, um, if I'm getting butterflies before going out and doing a performance or something like that, I always go back to that memory and remind myself like I'm supposed to be here. I'm the chosen one. I'm really supposed to be here. And like I said, it's more divine intervention and more things I've experienced with my God 
because I'm in touch with God. And so a motherfucker watching this that's not in touch with God would never, ever get it in a million years, you know. But I pray that they can, you know, get that relationship and, 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 and believe in something and have a higher power that can help them out in life because I've been guided through this whole life. And even past that, past violent shit, you know, I was about to sign with Treyway, shout out to Shoddy, but that would have never, you know, I, I would have never made it where I'm at. I was about to be on Love and Hip Hop, Divine Intervention, stop that. I'm talking about, I'm in the cast, supposed to go that day. And they called me and say, Oh no, Mona Scott and them say, oh no, actually we're just gonna go with the older people. My career would have been done. I wanted to sign to a major label, my career would have been done. So every time there was something that I really wanted, you know, God steered me away. God has guided me this whole way. And I know we on Camp Capone and shit like that. And I feel that, you know, in the industry, in the media, it's kind of like taboo to people to talk about God. I don't really see a lot of rappers talking about that. But that's what I deal with, you know what I mean? I damn near feel like my albums should be gospel albums because I talk so much about my relationship with the maker, you know? Amen. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. Did any of those situations change you? Yeah, every single one changed me. Because every, you know what it is, Kim? God protects fools and babies. So I was a fool and a baby when I was coming up and I was doing things. I did not know what I was doing, technically. I didn't fully comprehend the ramifications. And he spared me. Now, if I do some shit now, me, the person I am now, he's not gonna protect me in that same way. You know, so I learned from each one. I said, oh, thank you, God, I learned a lesson. I used to always pray when I was growing up. I used to always pray, Lord, um, I had some sort of prayer that basically said, um, please discipline me through your lessons and not with your wrath. Like, don't discipline me through your wrath. Let me learn the lesson. Don't hit me with your wrath because I know what your wrath can be. You know, so. Yeah, I learned from every one of them and I'm still learning. You mentioned you have uh, close friends doing natural life. You know, going through that, you know, free how smoke, does that change? Booty, you? Yeah. You know, going through something like that and, and growing up around that, man, how, how does that affect you? It fucked me up. I talk to lifers more than I talk to any humans on this planet. Those are really my bros. You know what I mean? Um, I talk to them on the phone. I don't even have real 20, 30, 40 minute conversations with, with, with regular people, but I'll talk to the homies, three of those back to back. I talk for an hour, whatever it is, because these are my friends that are supposed to be with me here at this interview moving around. They deserve everything, you know, when they got a raw deal for real. Yeah. And that's something that I really um, am hoping as my status grows, you know, just uh, as a rapper and, and I meet more people of influence that I'm gonna be able to, uh, that I'm gonna be able to, you know, meet people of influence that'll be able to help this out with the uh, justice reform because they, they got a raw deal for real. Well, well, free them, man. Hopefully, nah, it works for out. sure, free them. And it's so crazy because one of my homies, like, if he got out right now, he'd be the next Wallow. He's the funniest person you'll ever meet. Day to day, his energy is just higher than mine. You know what I mean? So, yeah, man, free, free, free the homies, man. What's up? This is Cam Capone. We got more content like this coming soon. So hit that like button, subscribe. And stay locked in to Cam Capone News.